Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to uh, do some fall decor, and we're going to start with uh, this pumpkin. Now, I tried to do the technique that I'm going to be doing on a hollow foam pumpkin, and it didn't work. Uh, so, this one isn't hollow, and so I'm going to do it instead. Now, I probably should have painted this with a light color so that this wouldn't show through at all because the fabric that I'm going to be doing is this teal colored chenille. But because it's thin, you could slightly see through. Not enough that, uh, that it bothered me, though. Uh, so, what I'm doing is taking uh, my utility knife. Now, you could use an X-Acto knife here. I just wanted one that was a little bit sturdier than that. And I'm cutting down the um, sections and uh, just kind of outlining them one at a time. You could just do them all at once, I guess. But the reason the hollow pumpkin didn't work is in order for me to cut these uh, deep enough for the technique that I'm going to be using, um, it would cut through in places and then in places my pumpkin didn't hold together. So I recommend using a better quality pumpkin. Uh, this is one that I thrifted at some point and uh, so I don't have much money in it. And then I'm just taking a small piece of fabric, and thinner is better here, and using a butter knife to kind of stuff it down in those cracks. And um, so you can just fill in your whole section. Now what I do is, I, with the side that I start with, and I'm sorry I'm out of frame here, but the side that I started with, um, I just tucked it uh, I went closer to that edge with the edge of the fabric and just tucked that whole side in. And then on the second side, then I just tuck it in all the way down and then I cut the excess away and then finish tucking what is left uh, back down in that. So what you're doing is just outlining each section with your fabric. And... Um, you can cover the whole pumpkin like this, which is what I'm going to be doing. As you can see, I'm just cutting that excess away. And then I'll use that butter knife again and just tuck what's left over uh, back inside the pumpkin. And that will neaten that whole slice up. And, um, and it'll look like that you have it uh, covered and it's actually sewn in there. But um, I love this technique. I, I saw this on Pinterest some time ago, but I had never tried one. So I just keep slicing one pumpkin at a time. And in this case, uh, I'm just taking my, doing the length of my blade, if that makes sense. And, um, and just covering the whole thing. Now you can use different fabrics here. And um, if I had had two different chenelles that were thin, that's what I would have used. Uh, but I decided I wanted this in chenel, so I just did the whole thing um, in this light teal. And I forgot to mention that I did cut the stem out on this as well. Now, I decided I wanted a couple of leaves on this one, so I just happened to have this doily that uh, had been damaged and I'd cut a little from anyway, and I cut two of those corners off, and I'm going to be using those to make the leaves. So I'm just going to kind of uh, wrap that at the raw edge around to the back and glue that, do that on both sides, and then glue that down. I'm having to be really careful here because if you guys have watched me long, you know that I always use, or almost always, use low temp glue guns because I am uh, notorious for burning myself if I don't. 
um, but I wanted to use some of my large glue sticks up so I've been using this larger glue gun which is a high temp glue gun and uh, it's kind of slowing me down I'm having to be extra careful but again I'm just kind of rolling that raw edge under and gluing it down and that'll kind of make the shape of the leaf but the good thing about these pumpkins is they just have to resemble a leaf uh, you don't have to be exact with this i just happened to find the doily that would work really well and again i'm just going to glue a couple of these to the top before i add my um, stem and I'm going to use that st same stem that was on there because I really like it. I just don't really care for the color. So what I'm going to do is just paint it in the color buttercream. Or actually, I think I used drop cloth on this. And um, I'm just going to kind of paint it but not worry about full coverage. And uh, th then uh, once I painted that and let it dry, then I took my little finger sander and did some extra s sanding on it to bring more of that brown through. And I really liked the look that I got from that. So this is my first makeover. And as you can see, that gave that stem a really pretty look. Now the second, I'm starting with uh, a board. And uh, I think this is just a one by six I think that is um, cut into about 12 to 14 inch lengths. Now I saw this on Pinterest an easy way to draw pumpkins so you start with that center circle or oblong uh, shape and you and then you draw one off from each side so I'm going to uh, I'm going to slow this down for you to see it better. So you're going to take these second and third oblong shapes, uh, the length, the full length of the one in the middle, if that makes sense. And you're just going to kind of draw that around the top and around the bottom and just kind of connect it. This fourth and fifth one, you're going to go a little higher up, still the same length on the bottom, but just a little bit higher up on the sides. And I know that looks funny, but it'll make sense here in a second. So there is what you have for your pumpkin so far. And then you're going to start to draw your stem. And a stem is just very, very simple. I still have this slowed down quite a bit. And you're just going to kind of Draw your stem over to the side a little larger on the bottom and then let it get skinnier as it goes up. So there is your stem. Still that top looks kind of funny, but you're going to give this more of a 3D look and you're going to start from the that last one and then end in the middle of the first the next one and then start in the middle of that one and end on your stem. So just you, if you need to, you can just keep kind of playing this part over until you get your pumpkin drawn. And it's just a very easy way to make a pumpkin shape. And I thought that made so much sense. Usually I just kind of draw those out and just kind of make it happen as I go. But that's just kind of a foolproof way to uh, make your pumpkin. Now I'm going to cut all of these sections out because I have a reason that I need them cut out and I've done this on cardstock because what I'm going to be doing is taking some napkins and decoupaging on each of these pieces and then I'll put it back together on my board kind of like patchwork. So uh, it's probably a good idea for you to kind of lay these down on your table uh, in order that you have them on. Now what I did after I cut these out is I kind of I reversed it because what I'm going to be doing is decoupaging on the opposite side and the reason is because I had still had some of these lines on it and I didn't want to trim any of them out because I wanted it to still fit. So I did my decoupage on the other side and um, and just kind of flipped it that way. Uh, again, I would keep these in order because it's a lot easier to piece it back together when you know where each piece goes. Now, I've already base coated my board and I just used uh, 
a couple of different greens and a little bit of buttercream and just kind of painted it while it was still wet i added the buttercream and kept my strokes in one direction and but any kind of faux look you want on the background or you could do just a completely solid background but i needed this board uh, to build my pumpkin on now i'm going to decoupage with one, only one layer and again this is uh, some of the napkins that i got from marshall's uh, marshall's has a really good selection of fall napkins right now and this one was 4.99 a pack uh, but most of the napkins that I found were $2.99. So what I'm doing is just covering each of these with one layer from a napkin. And I'm using different prints here uh, because, again, I want it to look kind of like patchwork. Now, after I got all these covered and trimmed up and they're dry, uh, then I'm just taking some of my walnut distress ink. Uh, and going around all the edges and I'm making sure to get these distressed really well around the edges because uh, in doing this part you add your dimension and it makes your pumpkin look uh, more like it's kind of coming off the uh, board and uh, it's crazy you would think that this would look like decoupage paper, but for some reason when I got it finished, it actually looked more like cloth. But what I'll do is glue all these pieces in place uh, and just build that pumpkin back exactly the way it was, except obviously now it has the decoupage on it. And I didn't use regular decoupage uh, to put these onto the board because I didn't feel like it was strong enough so I'm using tacky glue here and then I tore a thin strip of coffee stained tea towel and I'm just going to glue a strip on both the top and the bottom I could have used regular ribbon here but I just like this look I wanted to add some rustic qualities to this, but I also wanted to add some cloth because again, I think that decoupage looks a lot like cloth. And once I get this glued on both the top and the bottom, I'm gonna add another layer here. So I glued some lace on the top and the bottom, and this was just some white lace that I coffee stained. And I still wanted to add some more character to this, so I made a shabby bow out of uh, some strips of coffee stain tea towel and some laces and I added to the top. And if you've never made a shabby bow before, you just uh, tear some strips or cut some strips if you're using fabric that won't tear. And probably about, uh, in this case, I think I did them probably about four inches long and um, just tied them together and glued them on the top and that's just a really really simple way of making a shabby bow and i just kind of spread that apart and glued it uh, just below the stem and i'm just noticing that i used some of the jute uh, trim that you get at the dollar tree that's actually what i put on the top and the bottom and then i added a little extra on the top because i felt like it needed some extra trimming and i think that made a really sweet little wall hanging if you used it for a wall hanging i actually didn't put a hanger on it because i felt like it would display better on a plate rack so now i'm going to do another little wooden plaque and I'm going to do this one or start this one the same way. I'm going to draw that same pumpkin that I saw how to draw on Pinterest. And again, this is so easy. Um, so you just draw the oblong area in the center and then you add, then you uh, connect two more to each of those. And then you go up a little bit higher and make a fifth, a fourth and fifth one. And that gives you the basic shape of your pumpkin. And then you're going to draw your um, pumpkin stem and, uh, and then draw your extra little slices in the back. And I kind of added those in before I did 
the stem, but on the other one, that's the way that you're supposed to do it. Draw the stem first and then, and then fill that in. So now I'm just gonna cut this one out because I'm gonna use this as a pattern. And I could have just drawn a pumpkin, but I felt like if I did this first, then I could trim out around those little sections and I would know where to draw my lines. So um, I cut this out and then I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna draw it out on a sheet of old music. And, uh, and that's going to be my pumpkin. And this one's going to be more neutral. So uh, I'm just going to draw these sections out on this. And I'm kind of using the little uh, indentions in the bottom to show where my, wood sli or my um, pumpkin slices will be. And um, I'm going to draw those on with the pencil very lightly uh, because I don't really want that showing. But here I'm using my distress ink all around the edges and I'm very heavily distressing it around the edges. Um, I want to add some dimension here because this one is just going to be the paper and I want to see that dimension. And I'm also going to be using the distress ink to create dimension after I draw the little pumpkin sections. So here I am just very lightly drawing these on and um, that will just kind of give me an idea of where I need to do my distress ink. Uh, but again, I don't want to make this dark enough that you can really see it when I get finished. And this step is what where you really start to see the pumpkin come together. Now you're just going to very lightly do your distress ink. Uh, and I'm just kind of using the, the tip of the side and just very, very lightly. You don't have to worry about not getting enough because you can always just keep doing, going over it more and more. But if you put too much pressure on it and you add too much at once, it's, it's a little harder to fix. You still could, you could just darken your whole pumpkin some, but, um, just, this is a step where you just need to be patient and, uh, just kind of very lightly, um, distress it and then just add more when you need it. But as you can see, this really starts to uh, look more realistic. And obviously you still know it's this music sheet. It's just, uh, it's just going to add so much dimension and shading to this. And um, I, I don't do anything else other than use this distress ink to um, to add to this. I wanted to keep it very neutral. And um, now this, I just happened to have this board already painted with this kind of uh, faux background. Uh, but this one, I think, would have looked really good if I had, uh, if I had decoupage first, um, just a book page behind it and then did the pumpkin. I think that would be really pretty. So how I'm gonna color the, the stem is I'm just gonna take this Distress Ink and, and make the stem a lot darker. And I'm also gonna use the ink to create some shading back behind the pumpkin. Now because I want to uh, add some extra interest to this, but I don't want to add extra color then I'm just going to use some natural elements to um, give it more character. So once I get this glued on, then um, I'm going to take some raffia grass and just kind of create a bed of grass underneath it. And I'll just hot glue that on. And then, uh, and then across the top of it, I'm going to add some of that jute trim from the Dollar Tree. And then, uh, and then I'm going to make a simple bow around the top of it, uh, just out of some natural 
material. I think I used jute and some uh, coffee stained tea towel. Then I think all of that will be enough character and still be able to keep this very neutral. Now I used to paint pumpkins on boards and although I do enjoy painting pumpkins, I think it's one of the easiest things to paint. Um, but um, I don't do much painting anymore. And the reason is because painting is a lot more time consuming and um, I just find myself doing more decoupage than I do painting and it sells just as well. I actually have a couple of hang tags that I'll show at the end of this video and uh, I want to take the time and thank you guys for participating in that. I just love seeing all the things that you guys do to the hang tags and if you haven't heard um, I am inviting you guys to make Christmas hang tags um, that I can put on my Christmas tree. So I'll do a Christmas tree in the shop that is decorated only in Ural's hang tags and I think it'll make a really pretty tree. So I'll be collecting some of those. Uh, you guys were sending them in to put on my hang tag wall and I still enjoy getting those so feel free to send those in. Uh, but I am, um, I actually had a viewer to mention maybe doing some Christmas hang tags to decorate a tree, and I thought that was a great idea, so, uh, that's what I have been putting back. I'm not putting those on the wall yet, the ones for Christmas. I'm holding those back to decorate the tree, and I will include my address where you can send the hang tags in the description. Um, we just thought that um, sending the hang tags uh, wouldn't be much shipping. It's just a, an easy way for you guys to show some of the things that you do because that's one of the things that I don't like about YouTube is that they don't allow for that. So, um, so I, I'll be waiting to get those hang tags and I will show them with each video. I will show the hang tags that I have at the end of that video and I'll mention your name if you want your name mentioned. If not, I'll just use a first name. Now this is a pumpkin that I thrifted and I've already taken the top off of it and I'm going to decoupage this napkin on here and this napkin I actually found at Marshall's this year. They had a really good selection of fall napkins. So I got about uh, five different napkins. So if you guys have one in your area, check out their new designs. This one I really like because it's such a small design uh, that it's very easy to decoupage with. You don't have to worry about piecing things exactly. It's all gonna kind of flow together. So that's the reason that I'm using that on here. But another thing that I really like about it is it has beautiful fall colors, but it's not limited to the fall season. So um, I just, I really like this napkin. This is probably my favorite fall napkin this year. So I just covered the whole thing with this napkin and I'm just using watered down glue for decoupage medium here. And then I'm, um, glued a drawer pull on the top and that's all that I did to that one. So both the hang tags I have today are from a vet from Florida. Now she didn't say I could use her whole name so I'm just going to use her first name just in case. But I love this beautiful hang tag. She said she belongs to one of the oldest churches in the world and it's called Coptic Orthodox Egyptian Church. And uh, these hang tag show some of the symbols from her church. This red one, she said, shows the symbols. And I think that's really neat uh, that it's one of the oldest churches in the world. I love all the beautiful colors on these, and I love the aging she did in the background. I think these are just really, really pretty. She did such a great job on them. Here's the back of that second one. And of course, it says Jesus there on the top, and I love that. Again, thank you guys so much for sending these in. I know that uh, it takes some time, and 
Some of these are so pretty that I'm sure you don't really want to part with them. So I do appreciate it so much. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.